Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. It's Friday, my favorite day of the week. Today, we're joined by one of the most talented young artists to break through in South Africa over the past few years. His name is Nakane Ture. And apart from his unique, beautiful music, he's also recently published his first novel called Piggy Boys Blues. He's here to share his very interesting life story with us. We'll also be chatting to actress Johanna Stradum, who used to be on Seven Delan and played the lead role in SABC 2's Erf Sonders. She's got a new film coming out next week. It's called Fuskiet and Stag. And because it's the weekend, we'll be taking a look at a fun way to spend an afternoon with your family and friends. It's called Hint Hunt, and it's basically a giant puzzle-solving adventure that you can play with your friends and family. We're in the kitchen handling some very expensive steak, and I'm not talking about Bonang. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Bonnie. Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonang Mateba. It feels like I haven't been in this kitchen in such a long time. Welcome to Afternoon Express. And Bonnie is 100% correct. Today, we are cooking with the caviar of beef, wangu beef. And in the kitchen, I've got, of course, food stylist Tessa Perrin. Lovely to have you. Nice to be here. Good afternoon. Now, Thanks. you're going to tell us a little bit more about why it's called the caviar beef, right? But what are we making yeah. today? We are going to be cooking um, a rabat steak with some waffle fries. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I think Iran loves a good steak. I love a good <laughs> steak. I love a good steak. So what are some of the ingredients we're going to need here? Okay, so first of all, the meat, which is the most important. Um, we've got two, two rabats here. One is the, the Wagyu Angus that we're going to be cooking and then a normal ribeye, and you can really see the difference. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's because the Wagyu Angus has got a lot of marbling. Oh. And marbling is the, the fat, the intramuscular fat right. that's in the meat. It almost looks like, like a piece of marbling. because it does. It's, Yeah. Um, and that fat actually melts at a very low temperature. It melts at 18 degrees. So it literally melts in your mouth, literally. Now I'm getting really, <laughs> really, really hungry. But make sure that if you want to cook along with us, all the ingredients, of course, the recipe will be on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. But right now, back to Bonnie in the lounge, standing by with our very first guest this afternoon, the very talented Nakane Torre. To say that he has lived a colourful life would be an understatement. From being born into a traditional Kosa family in the Eastern Cape, moving around to different homes during his childhood, discovering a passion for music, to releasing a Sama-winning debut album, and last year even publishing his first novel, he's a brave and groundbreaking artist who's paved his way to success through honesty and reflecting his true self in the music that he creates. Joining us in the loft is Nakane Ture. Welcome to the loft. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honour to have you with us. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So you were raised strictly Anglican, and you grew up in the Eastern Cape. Yeah, I was raised by a family that was sort of split in half. One was incredibly traditional, and one was very, very Christian. Um, ah. The denomination in terms of Christianity sort of changed all the time throughout my life. It was firstly Presbyterian, and then it became, uh, what do you call it when they... Happy oh, clapping. charismatic. Charismatic. Yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yes. That's so funny, yeah? <laughs> and, then, and then after that, it became very conservative mm. and Anglican. Mm. But by Anglican, I don't mean um, Desmond Tutu Anglican. I mean, yeah. like, right, right wing Anglican. Wow, wow. So it was sort of a movement throughout that. And where did you find yourself in this polarity? Behind my mother. Behind her. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I mean, if my mother said something, I, I believed it because I was always stuck to her, to her apron. Wow. Um, yeah. So yeah. it was only then I, when I was like, uh, I don't quite believe in it anymore that we started having differences. And how did the artist in you develop in that space? And it was a very gracious space because my mom really loved art and everyone in my family sang and I was encouraged to sing because we all sang. And when I went to school, I instinctively took to instruments and I, I, right. I, I started becoming involved in plays. I, I started writing and sort of annoying music teachers because it yeah. gave us the sheet music oh, and be wow. like, learn it. And I'd be like, okay, but it would work better if we did this. Wow. So, and yeah. th that was something that was very encouraged in my family yeah. most of the time. It was only when I started becoming cheeky at home <laughs> in the domestic settings yeah. that people are like, okay, sit down. Okay. But, okay. In, but in terms of art, I was really encouraged. You moved around a lot. Did yeah. that influence the artists you were becoming, do you find? You know, I was, a, I was an only child for a long, long time. So by the time that my mother had another child, I was so used to being by myself and I knew ah. how to entertain mm, myself. Right. So I'd come back from school and I would, I'd probably finish my homework at school and then afterwards get, get, get home not even change and just listen to music and you know wow. practice my instrument that was, i didn't watch much tv so i'll read you. and stuff like that that's why you're brilliant now <laughs> i'm sure there's some good tv yeah. i just haven't 
like this. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Nice one, nice one. You came out to your family when you were 19. Where did you find the courage? And what, what did that experience mean? Well, I came out to my friends when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And I had a party and everything. My, my family had gone to PE for some thing. And I was left alone, so I had one, a, a party at home. You had a party. And I invited a friend, I stopped music, and I said, okay, I have an announcement to make. And people were like, okay, what's the point? Yeah. Here. And I was like, sweet, okay, let's go on with the party. And then um, I, was, I was outed by a friend, you no, know, by someone I dated. And she told her mother, and, my, and they were, my mom and her mother were best friends. So she a woman scorned? <laughs> <laughs> A okay, bit. moving right along. A little bit. But, <laughs> but yeah, so, and then my mom was like, so is this true? And I was like, thank God. I don't have to do my turn. Wow, said, yeah. wow. Yeah, I mean, it was hard. There yeah. was the, you won't be in my house. And I, I wasn't in the house. And mm -hmm. there was mm -hmm. the back and forth. Okay, Jesus can save me. Okay, he can't. Okay. Right, So right. until I was just like, this is just exhausting. And your extended family, did, did you get any support from them? It was complicated because there's the, there that whole, the dialogue of, you know, please change for me. Yeah. And I was like, but this, this really, Why I promise you, this, this is to not, us? this is nothing, exactly. Yeah, don't do no, this No, this to has me. nothing to do with you, I promise you, I'm still the same yeah. person. Actually, I'm yeah. just, if anything, I'm more, I'm more me now than I yeah. ever was. Yeah. The only thing that changes now is that, you know, this little part, part about me, which you always thought anyway. Yeah. So yeah. why do we even have to have this conversation? Do you find a lot of young men are having these experiences in villages and are just stuck, don't know what to do, don't know how to do it? Yeah, I think it's very difficult. I think we, we take for granted the fact that a lot of us have safe spaces in the city and that we surround ourselves with people who are like-minded and we think that everyone should just come out of the closet yeah. in very dangerous areas. So I think there's a slight insensitivity with people who are in safe spaces or in academia telling people to just come out. Right. And there's nothing wrong with coming out. I just do think that we should need to be sensitive about people's um, surroundings and the yeah. fact that some people literally could be killed. Wow. So um, definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's why I create the art, the art I create because, I mean, I know that when I was in my teenage years and I picked up a book by James Baldwin and I was like, oh my God, I'm not alone in the world. Wow. And that's the point of art, you know, yes. is to, even if it doesn't change anything, at least it changes that person who's reading the work yeah. or listening to yeah. the music. And they, they know that they're not crazy. They're they know included. That they're not, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They, they feel some sort of family, yeah. some belonging. And your debut novel... Yes. Boys, congratulations. Boys, you, you are long listed for a literary Sunday Times Literary yeah. Award. How do you feel? Yesterday we were well, we, we, we were out and um, I had just read it in the paper and it just it kept it coming to me in, 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 in waves. So I'm like, oh my yeah. word, I've been long listed. Yeah. Hmm. And then moved on have a conversation. And then half conversation of like, oh, I'm long listed. Yeah, <laughs> that's know? incredible. So it's just insane. I don't I don't I don't understand how all of it has happened wow. in such a short space of time. Wow. But I'm really, really grateful. Yeah. I'm really, really happy. Yeah. And the only thing I can do is just be happy. Yeah. You How know? did you come to write the book? Well, the book took about seven years to write. Seven years. Seven years to write. Wow. Um, I started writing when I was very, very young. I wrote really bad stories and, and, and poems when I was in high school and uh -huh. primary school. And I thought it was brilliant, of course. Yeah. In my mind, I was going to be that person who would come, would be sort of like, Michael Jackson. By no. the time, by the time, by the time I was sixteen, people would have understood his how good he was at, yeah, at, at this yeah, art. Yeah. But it, it took a little long, and I'm happy that it did because it helped me understand the kind of artist that I am, and now I can, and sort of just to mature, you know. So I started writing it. Well, what happened was that I had written an essay at school, uh -huh. and a school teacher of mine, an English teacher, called me and said, I kind of like to speak to you after, after class. And I'm like, oh, what have I done? Oh, no. You know? So I went up to her and I said, and she, and she said, okay, I've read an essay, it's very good, you've passed, you've done well, but it's not an essay, this is a short story. I said, oh, oh wow. okay, and she said, you wanna write, go write a book and I'll read it. And that was in my mind all the time thinking, she was right. I just didn't understand that I wanted to write. I always wanted to write and I always wanted. And when I, when I look about, when I think about the, that essay, <laughs> that short story That's I'd true, written, yeah. all the properties that were in that short story, story. Are in my novel in some way or another. Oh, that's incredible. You know, so it was that encouragement again yeah, from people yeah. who, who saw something in me that maybe I hadn't even realized at yeah. the time. And I started writing it when I was, I think, 20. 
I'd gone through a trauma and I wanted to just write it out of me. And initially it was very autobiographical, but yeah. throughout the years I was starting to, okay. to sort of make it even more fiction yeah. and sort of yeah. work with creativity. Well, I'm glad you craft. did, and we need more teachers like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we really, really do. We're, we're going to really be back and talk more about Sweet. your book and your music, but we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express right here on SCBC3. In case you just tuned in just in time for part one of our very exciting cooking session with the food stylist Tessa right here in the kitchen. And today we are using, of course, the caviar of beef, wangu beef. We're going to make that the ribeye yes. and uh, accompany with some beer and mustard sauce. So let's get straight into it. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to grab our, our meat and I'm just going to coat... Um, Coat each side with a little bit of olive oil. You can see it is quite, yeah, it's, uh, quite it's, not, it's not quite dry, it's yeah. just from the fat. And then I'm going to... Straight into the pan. Straight into the pan. Yeah. Oh. Okay, you can hear it sizzle and I'm just going to season it a bit. Yeah. Just very lightly. Now, Tessa, I want to know the difference between wangu beef and, you know, an ordinary, let's say, ribeye. What, how much does it retail for? Um, <laughs> it's quite a lot more. I would okay. say at the moment, ribeye, you're probably looking at between 1,000 to 2,000 rand in a butchery per kg. Uh, yeah, so it's quite expensive. Wow. Um, the normal ribeye, obviously, is yeah. a lot less. Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be um, searing for about one to two minutes. On each on side? On each side. Okay. Um, and then we're going to pop it in the oven for about five minutes. All right. To cook through. Or, you know, to your to your likeness. Everybody yeah. likes steak a different way. So How do you like yours? Um, medium rare. I don't like it. Really? Too, uh, yeah, I don't like it too rare, but that's also just I like personal. medium to well. Yeah. I don't you like see, to see too much yeah. blood in there. All right. So Fantastic. now that um, fat is literally going to melt into the meat. Okay. And you won't be able to see it at all when you, when you cut it. But you can obviously taste it. Yeah, you said obviously. it melts yeah. in your mouth. It oh. really just adds all the flavor, all the juiciness, um, and just makes it buttery and soft. Yeah. But obviously you could, okay. can, you could dry this. Could you pop it on a bra? Absolutely. You could, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check. I'm just going to turn it. Can you oh. see it's got those slight kind of seared marks? And you don't want to um, sear it to the point of dryness on the outside, mm. where it gets that ugly crust. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not what you want. You want it to still be quite soft. All right. I also want to know the difference between a wangu cow yes. beef and an ordinary. Okay, What's so the difference and how are they farmed? Beef, yeah, you know? Wagyu beef is from um, Japan. It's a oh. Japanese breed of beef. And it's actually called Kobe beef in Japan. So similar to how champagne is, can, only, champagne. Be, yeah, can yes. only be called champagne in champagne, it's the same thing. Kobe beef it can only be beef. called that in Japan. Um, so elsewhere in the world, it's called Wagyu. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, so we kind of have our own South African style Wagyu. Can and we? We can. Yeah. All right. So this is, this is Wagyu Angus, mm -hmm. where the Wagyu cow has been, or the Wagyu bull has been crossed with um, an Angus cow. Ah, yeah. interesting. So kind of like creating a whole new breed okay. out of the two. Fantastic. Okay, now I think this one's done on the side. So what we're going to do is just pop this in the oven for mm -hmm. a bit. And then take it out to let it rest. All right. Okay. All right. And then how long does it go in the oven for? About four to five minutes. Okay. Yeah. And then does that mean we can start on the sauce now? That yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Get in there. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Of course, if you want any of the information, it will be on our website on afternoonexpress.co.za. You need to be in this kitchen. It smells oh, so so good. A little bit later, we're going to be making that delicious beer and uh, mustard sauce. Looking forward to that. But let's move on over back to Bonnie with Makani. We're back on the couch with artist, author and musician Makani Toure. So tell us about the story of the book. What is it? So the book is based in, in the Eastern Cape. Um, in a small town called Alice and Port Elizabeth towards the end. And this, it's about uh, a 20-something-year-old guy who leaves the city and he goes to live with his uncle to sort of really cleanse himself and just for some peace of mind. And when he gets to this house that his uncle lives in, he realizes that his uncle lives, lives with another man. And then there's a tug of war obsessive relationship that forms between him, the character, Davide, and another character, Grey, who's somewhere in his 40s. Uh, that ends in very interesting outcomes. It's, it's mm. a, I think it's a, it's a story about really obsession and, 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 and the idea of boundaries and the fact that some people don't understand that boundaries exist. Wow, what yeah. are the themes in the book? There's a whole, there's a whole idea of violence, uh, 
abuse, whether intended or not. There's a theme of sort of baptism, in a way. There's this whole idea, um, there's a late motif of water in the, in, in the novel yeah. that, that carries across you know, from the beginning to the end, really. Yeah. And one of the, what, what, and memory. Memory is a, is a big theme in the book and how, how we look at our memories differently dep depending on where we are in our lives mm. and depending on what we've done mm. and what we want to remember and mm. how we want to remember it, yeah. depending, de yeah. also depending on, <laughs> on, on how much guilt and shame we feel, right, you know. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of, of memory and shame. But it's also really funny. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's, it's not yeah. too dark. Yeah, I, I read your book. It's yeah. beautifully written. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. So music. Yes. How did music enter your life? How did you know that I'm a musician and this is the type of music I want to make? You make quite interesting, controversial music. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my friends always laugh at me because in my mind, I think I make pop music. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, okay, they're like, uh, okay. no, you don't. Wow, okay. But I don't know how like, that happened, but... It's going to be played on the radio, it's going to be they're like, um... No, it's not no, going to be. No, 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 can't. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things I, I had to get over really quickly. But, um... My family was really, really musical. Everyone in my family sang and still does really, really well. Wow. They sang in choirs, mm. they sang pieces by Mozart and Handel. So I always used to go to choir practices. I mean, I remember I always tell the story when I was very young and my mom said I couldn't come to choir practice that night. And so I, everyone was having supper before they went to choir practice and I was having my supper very quickly and I finished and I was like, okay, good night. And then I snuck out and hid in the boot of the car. And when they arrived at choir practice, I was like, I'm actually here. So I was that obsessed with being around that, you know, that environment to the point yeah. where I'd hide in the boot, you know, wow. in order for me to get to yeah. be there. But I was, it was around seven years old and it was a Christmas carol evening and I was given my first solo. I was singing Silent Night. And I remember at that moment, I, was, I remember holding the microphone thinking, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. Oh, wow. You know? How beautiful. How that, absolutely and, and I never, profound. And I put everything I had and into yeah. acquiring that dream. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you also make very controversial music videos, and one of them is shot in a prison cell. Yeah, in Constitution Hill. Yeah, what was that about? What happened? Well, in the dark room, the song in the dark room is about, well, the chorus is, hope you know I'll hate myself in the morning for this. Um, it's about the whole idea of, you know, I know I'm doing this tonight, but I know for a fact that tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm going to hate myself with everything that I have wow. <laughs> for doing it. But I'm doing it I'm anyway doing it. because it's giving me some sort of joy right now. And I want to. And I want to. <laughs> whether, whether it's wrong or right exactly. is not my problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll deal with it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So the video was in a very small prison cell. And I really like the texture. I wanted to work with, there's a photographer um, who died in the 70s or 80s, I can't remember. Her name is Francesca Woodman. And she used to take these really dark um, self-portraits mm -hmm. in abandoned buildings. And I, and I really like the texture of that. I, li I like the texture of the fact that, well, and the setting of the fact that the settings was, was, was sort of talking about how where her mind was. Yeah. And you understood it because of how rough it was and how black and white it was, how high contrast it was, wow. you know, and how she worked with mirrors, you know, and, mm. and obfuscation. So I wanted to work with, with that idea in the video and, and, and translate what was in the mind of the person singing the song yeah. into the prison cell, yeah. you know. Yeah. Tell us about the inspiration behind the song Christopher. Christopher. I'd finished writing for my debut album, Brave Confusion, and we'd done the demos, we'd gone to the, to the studio, and we'd chosen the songs that were gonna go to, that go into the album. Yeah. And I hadn't written Christopher yet. And suddenly I became really obsessed with Prince, and my sister hated Prince's music. Okay. So I remember one day I was making coffee and I was like, I'm gonna write a song like Prince and I'm gonna annoy you. And it was a joke initially, it was just a joke. Uh -huh. So I sat down and I wrote the song, and I didn't, I wrote the first verse, and I was supposed to meet this guy for a date, and it didn't work out, something like that, or because a, a, lot, a lot of people think it's a love song about the character Christopher, yeah. but it's actually about meeting him. Oh, wow, okay, you know? okay. <sighs> to cut a long story short, it ended up working and we ended up dating. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, so it was sort of like a... It was a, it was, a self-fulfilling prophecy like the handkerchief. of sorts, exactly. Yeah, remember how well. they, in the old days, women used to drop handkerchiefs mm -hmm. and the guy would pick it up mm -hmm. and then they start dating. It was almost like that. It has, it has that image of like, hey, now wow. I'm quoting you with the song. Wow. I, I call it a stalker anthem. <laughs> <laughs> what can we expect from you in the future? In the future, I'm working on my second album.
Mm -hmm. um, I released an EP last year in November called, called The Laughing Sun. And there's another project that I really can't talk about, which is not music and it's not literature. So check oh, out for wow. that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I'm just, you know, I just, it's a keeping busy and I'm, I'm really excited about where the work is going at the moment. You That's know. awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. Loved talking to you and you're not going anywhere. You're going to perform for us shortly, exactly. right? It's a song from my EP that came out in November. It's called Black and Bruised. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Thank we'll you. be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. My next guest is well known to the SMBC audience since her role as Kate Spencer in the series F. Saunders and as Helena in Sierra de la. Next week, her latest movie, very exciting, for Skeet and the Star or Shooting Star in English, which won the audience favourite at the Silver Scarum Film Festival, releases in cinemas across the country. Joining us in the loft is Yana Stratum. Welcome to the loft. Lovely to finally meet you. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Nice now I've watched you as Kate on F. Saunders and I've always wanted to know what you think it is about that particular series that made it you know such a success well it was a it was it's it's about sins of the past and we can all relate to that because it's something that's universal and we we were lucky enough to put together a really great team it was a nice mm. script the whole production behind the scenes uh, behind the cameras and in front we just we were just Gelled really well. And talking about you know relating, could you relate then to Kate, the lady that you you know played obviously in the series? Oh jeez, <laughs> did she have sins in the past? <laughs> yes, and so much happened to her. Um, I could relate. Obviously, you have to find something in the character that, that you relate yes. to because that's the only way to uh, portray it authentically. Um, but I'm happy that I'm not her because there's so much that happened to that poor woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was she had lots and lots of drama. But I, I mean, know. you've been through so many incredible productions that have been received wonderfully. Another one is uh, Swartwater, which is of course about you know the abalone poaching industry in South Africa. I want us to talk about about you know some of the challenges that you faced while you were shooting that. Well, Swartwater at that stage I was still living in Johannesburg. And uh, about six weeks at a time, we shot in Arniston, which is Cape Town, Western Cape. And um, my kids at that stage were, was one year and four years. So I took my kids with me to shoot. And my, my grandma, well, their grandma came with. And it, that was tough. That was tough being a home, mm. uh, away from home. And my husband's not there. And the, the kids are difficult. And I have to work. And it's tiring I know what you <laughs> but mean. we did it yeah and then were there any highlights during you know the creating of uh, swart water um something i'll never forget in my whole entire life is that they shot some drowning scenes um end of august september <gasps> And it was freezing, freezing and it was raining and we had to go out into the open sea oh, to shoot wow. these scenes. <laughs> That's the coldest I've ever been in my whole life. But I mean, with that said, then how do you balance, you know, being a mom and being an actress? And be, I mean, acting is so demanding on any given day. It's a, you know, 12 to 16 hour day. Yeah, yeah. You learn, you learn to find balance somehow. And it, it comes down to what's important to you. My family is very important mm. to me. So if a production can't take me with my family, then I can't be part of the production. Mm. So I take them with and we do a bit of everything and I work really hard the times that when, I, when I work and then when I don't work, I do really hard family time and yeah. I play with my kids and we do stuff. And that's wonderful. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> and I mean, you know, something else that's amazing is just, um, you know, the local film industry. Very excited. Your brand new film, For Skeet and the Star, releases on the 22nd of April. What is the basic premise of that film? Um, it's about a boy who has got a God-given talent to play the piano and his mom believes in him um, and his father um, forbids him to live out his talent. Yeah, and I mean, the, you play Maria yes. in this film. Tell me a little bit more about your character and some of the ups and downs and challenges or things we can expect from her. Well, she's the mom of the main character, the, the boy who plays the piano, um, DeAndre Reinders plays that character. And she's suffering from cancer um, and she's, she's, she's dying. Mm. And, and her role is very important because she, she needs to um, make her son believe that he, that he can believe, that he can do this. To have faith, so yeah, that was. It's an important character, but it's a small role because she dies. <laughs> oh, that's terrible! Yeah. Sounds like a very intricate storyline. Yeah, it's uh, it's a beautiful story, and yeah. people are going to relate to it because it's. Um, we've all we've all been through the themes of forgiving somebody for something that they've done wrong to us. We've all 
um, had something done wrong to us. So mm. again, universal themes, people will always relate to that. Absolutely, I can't wait to see it. But a couple of uh, months ago on the show, we had Heike Berg. Quite a, a ball of energy. <laughs> How is it, or oh, how you know, working with him and just being around that big personality? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heike is, yeah, Heike is Heike, hey. <laughs> I've, I've met Heike when I started my career at Igoli. Yeah. So I've known him for years and years and years. We know each other really well, and I know that energy so well. It was, it was fun, it was lovely. There was one scene where mm. he got a bit excited and he like, took a handful of flour and just chucked it in my face. I had yeah. flour in my eyes, in my nose, <laughs> everywhere. But it worked for the scene. It's in the movie, I saw it. That's amazing. <laughs> I can't wait for that. But I mean, you know, Yana, you've played so many incredible roles, you know, Kate and Maria. And uh, if I had to ask you of all the productions you've been part of, which has been your favorite uh, character to play and why? Sure, okay. Um, every character has got something that's special to that specific character. Um, something, that, something that I've done recently that was completely different mm. to the drama roles that I usually levitate to was a bit of action, and that was really nice. I played a badass cop in Triergrond. And nice. that was a lot of fun because I got to do my own stunts. It's running, it's guns. So that was yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, being a mom, would you then allow your child to say, hey, you know, mom, I want to be an actor and actress. I want to follow in your footsteps. Would, you, would you, you support them? How can you not allow your child yeah. to do something that he, that he loves? I will support them either way, but I would not recommend it to them <laughs> and like <laughs> pr probe them in that direction. <laughs> All right. I mean, my last question then for everybody at home, why must we go see your brand new film, uh, Frisket and Dastar? Because I think it's going to touch audiences' hearts mm. and just uh, make them remember what forgiveness is all about. Beautiful. Well, Jana, thank you very, very much for coming. I'm so excited to see this film. For Skeet and the Star releases on Friday, the 22nd of April at cinemas all across the country. So make sure you go support local film and go watch this one. It's very inspiring. It's a musical drama. You are going to love it. After the break, we're taking a look at a unique way to spend time with your family or friends this weekend. It's called Hint Hunt and it's a live puzzle solving game. Very interesting. Stay around there. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, Hint Hunt is a concept that started in the UK and has taken the world by storm. It's a live escape game where you and your friends have to solve puzzles and try to get out of a room within a time limit. It's basically the closest chance you have in the modern world to becoming a Sherlock Holmes. The concept was brought to Cape Town a few years ago and has become one of the Mother City's go-to tourist attractions. And we're joined by owner Stephen Skitter to tell us more. Welcome to The Laugh, Stephen. Thanks very much. Right, so where did this idea originated from? Oh, well, before we start, for those at home who don't know what Hint Hunt is, yes. please explain it to us. I think you've given them a bit of a taste. Yeah. It's, uh, essentially, we take small groups of people and we lock them in a room for 60 minutes or hopefully less, depending on, on their skills in the room. Uh -huh. So I know it's a, it's a crazy thing to, to, to conceptualize, but it really is just that. We take people and we lock them in a room and they've got to solve a series of different puzzles and clues in order to make their way right, out. Right, right. And where did the idea originate from? Well, there is rumour that it started in Japan, of all places, in the Far East, okay. um, where our people used to come together in small groups and sit around tables, um, almost like a, a party, they'd get together and they'd be given similar tasks. It would be far more um, mathematical, they'd sit with calculators and things like that, and they would see who could complete the tasks in the shortest space wow. of time. And then some Hungarian chaps who, ironically, Houdini was Hungarian, um, mm. Rubik's, who invented the Rubik's yes, Cube, was Hungarian. Cube. Wow. Um, they decided to take this and make it a whole lot more fun. Right. So take a game and put you in the game and uh, make it, as I say, way more entertaining. Wow, that's incredible. So how many of these rooms are there and how are the rooms themed? All right, so globally, there's hundreds of different themed rooms. Right. So the themes really aren't about for a specific reason, they simply themed to transport the player to an abstract another environment. World. Another mm. world, yeah. Mm. It's, it's total escapism, excuse the wow, pun. Wow, wow. So you lock the room, and I mean, I tend to be claustrophobic sometimes, so I imagine, ima immediately I thought, sure. how big is the room? The room isn't very big at all. I don't want to give too much away because okay. you're going to have to come and right. we're going to have to lock you up. We've had lots of people who've had the same fear in terms of being a little claustrophobic 
Um, but we've allayed those fears. They feel fine inside. There's enough ventilation, um, and they've had fun. And I suppose that adds to the pressure of the game, right? Definitely. Right. So, who do you recommend that one plays this game with? You know, you can play it with anyone. It really doesn't um, attract a certain target uh -huh. or a certain type of person. From the young to the very old, we've had nine hundred thousand people play hint hunt at oh, the old biscuit wow. mill That's here incredible. in Cape Town. Yeah. And we've got two different themed rooms at the moment. One is a detective-themed room, and the other is a Japanese-themed room that we call the Zen Room. Both oh, offer wow. different experiences. Oh, that's incredible. So I could go with a partner or a team from work could go together for a bit of uh, team building. 100%. Yeah. In fact, we've got a whole corporate team building center at the Biscuit Mill now that caters just for that. We bring teams together, we put them in the rooms, we see who get out the room first, it tests them by way of communication skills yeah. and all sorts of other interesting things that happen right. you know, within, that, within the room. And what has been the success rate of actually, players actually getting out of the room? Well, the success rate differs. Um, each room is slightly more difficult than the other. The JM room, the James Murdoch room, which okay. is a detective themed room, the success rate is about 40, 50%. Wow. So of those thousands that have played, only about 40 or 50% make it out within the allotted time. Oh, wow. And the Zen room, only about 20% of people make it out within the allotted time. Wow. So, and what's the fastest that people have made it out the room? What's the fastest time they've made you it know, out? You know, we room? always, as, as game makers, we always like to say that a good game or an escape game is based on, you know, when the people come out the room. If people pop out the room with 20 minutes to spare, um, it really isn't as challenging as we'd hoped it to be. Yeah, so yeah. we say, you know, between 55 minutes and, and 60 minutes is the timeline. Wow. Most come out within the last minute. Oh, that's exciting. Mm. So are there any plans to expand it to Joburg, to the rest of the country? Ironically, we have just opened in Johannesburg Yay. at the Trapp Center in Elova. And um, we certainly have high hopes that in Johannesburg it's going to be as popular, if not more so, than Cape Town. Wow. Why do you think that it attracts more tourists? Would you say that there's more tourists who go there rather than locals? You know, for us, the decision to put uh, the game at the old Biscuit Mall was for two reasons. Um, the tourists know it as a destination. And yes. uh, for the corporates, they can get to it easily. And there's enough parking there. But you know, the tourists love it simply because it's one hour out of their day. Uh -huh. It's something completely unique. So when you've been to the beach or you've been to the wine farms and you've tasted all the fine foods that Cape Town has to offer. <laughs> and you're a little bit tipsy. And you're a little bit tipsy <laughs> and you want something strange to do. Yeah. They come along to Hintan, they spend an hour with us. They come out screaming, shouting. We've even had people say that this has been the best hour of their life. No way. Yes. So I'm definitely coming to Hint Hunt. Great. Thank you for coming to tell us all about it. We can't wait to have you. <laughs> awesome. For more information on Hint Hunt, pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Let's head back to the kitchen for the second part of our Wagyu steak recipe. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Getting into part two of our delicious recipe here this afternoon. And we're about to make a very delish beer and mustard sauce, right? Let's yeah. get into it. Okay, so we've taken our uh, steak out of the oven to mm -hmm. rest. It needs some time for the proteins to just relax. Um, and now we're going to make the sauce. So first up, I'm just going to saute some onions. Sort of a little hot. bit of butter there. Yeah. Very hot that time. It is hot. Okay. They don't need to have too much colour, just... Um, yeah. Yeah, just until they're nice and soft. But I mean, this combination, beer and mustard, very interesting. Very nice, okay. Can you then, serve it to kids? Um, <laughs> you actually could because the beer, the alcohol actually um, cooks off. Okay, cool. So you just get the, the main flavour of the beer. All right. Okay, so here it goes in the beer. And how much beer is that? Just That's about three cup. quarters of a cup, half okay. a cup. And then some stock. Any kind of stock, was it chicken, um, beef, beef stock? Beef probably stock. the best. Okay. I and mean, you could use whatever you have on hand. Um, okay. Do you need me to help you with yeah, that? Yeah, do you want to just hold that? that? And then you have to scoop a little bit of mustard in there, yeah. correct? Yeah, so we're going to add all this mustard. This is just some hot English mustard. Yeah. And then... That's my favourite. Whole grain, yeah. Whole Don't you grain love whole grain? Divine. Okay, I think that's all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we just need to put the heat up a bit. Now this needs to reduce until it gets nice and thick yes. and creamy and rich. 
So that needs quite a bit of time. But let's just put in some salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, absolutely, for some taste. And how long do you leave it to sit on the um, um, saucepan for? Gosh, it'll probably be about 10, 15 minutes to get it okay. to, the, yeah, to the consistency that we want. But obviously we've got some already prepared. That's oh, right. going to be... And this is how it looks when it's all done. Yeah, so you can see um, all the moisture is reduced, so it's nice and thick, and all those mustard and beer oh. flavors are just mingling. I cannot so. wait to just get in there all yeah. right well tessa this looks absolutely amazing after the break of course we're going to be dishing up and serving mm -hmm. it all to our incredible guests talking about incredible guests one of them is going to be performing after the break his name is nakane tori make sure you don't go anywhere more after the break right here on afternoon express Right now, it's time for us to get the party started. Bonnie's standing by with Nakane Tore. He's ready to perform. Check it out. We've had an awesome afternoon in the loft today getting to know Nakane Tore. Now, before we get to the performance, today we're giving away an Nakane Tore hamper containing his debut album, as well as his recent EP, Laughing Sun, and his novel, Piggy Boys Blues. All you have to do is SMS the keyword, express your name and city to 33728. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50, T's and C's apply, and can be found on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, though, here's Nakane Ture with Blackened and Bruised. I thought I said keep it far away from me Don't get it closer, keep it far away from me Tell me your fears, young man, so we can laugh at them Like me laughing at the growl of a raging pub Tell me your fears again, you laughing son That you were obstinate in a ways and were blackened by sin And when you saw them guns and hands, we shall the Stab and trust and take your plow and bow and burn and learn Do so buried in the light Do so buried in the light Do so Do you love love? Black and bruised Do you love love? Black and do you love now? Black and bruised Do you love now? I never thought I'd find what I found in you Walks in warring crowds you saw me too performance there. 
Natane, thank you so, so, so much. What a lovely way to end off today's show, of course. But we're not going to leave without eating. So, Tess, please do the honours. Mm -hmm. Yana, you came on a very special day. We're having yes. the caviar of beef. It's wangu beef. There we go. Oh, Does goodness. that not look it incredible? It looks nice, divine. Sauce. Thank you so much, Jess. Oh. I also have some desserts for everybody. Some Magnum. So what? what is your favorite flavor? Oh, stop it. Mint. Yes. Mint. mint. Yes, All right. Please. I'm going to get you a mint. Tess, which one would you like? Um, chocolate. Chocolate. Death by chocolate. Death by chocolate. <laughs> favorite. There you go. Ooh, Enjoy ooh, that. Yeah. All right. So there we Delish. go. My this kids are so looks... take me out for having sweets before food. They're going to be so jealous of I you, know. Mom. Well, Mom, thank you very much for coming, Yana. Thank you. I'm so excited for your new film. Yeah. I, you know, I wish you all the success in the world. That's going to be fantastic. Tess, you're going to be back very soon in the kitchen, I right? Think so, yeah. With uh, some more caviar of beef. Absolutely. Beefs. Now, this here's is... the sauce. I'm just going to oh lock it on goodness. there. You're going to die with the sauce. I can't wait. <gasps> what a treat. Please <laughs> dig in, dig in while they do that. Remember the recipes and, of course, all the ingredients you can find on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Please go out and support Yana's brand new film. It's coming out on the 22nd of April. Very excited about that. Tess, thank you very much for the delicious, mm. scrumptious meal. Nakani Tori and all our incredible guests. And, of course, to you for watching. We'll be back on SABC3 on Monday at 4 p.m. From all of us here, it's good evening and happy eating. Mwah. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we take a look at the I Was Shot in Joburg campaign, which gives a platform for street kids to learn a skill and generate an income. We also chat to South African first black female winemaker, Carmen Stevens, and we're joined by author Jean Archery to chat about financial education for kids. Another Feel Good Production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you explain.